My name is Benno, I'm a consultant to Sora Mitsu, more on the business side, and today I will um, introduce you to Hyperledger Iroha, one of the first contributions to the Hyperledger Foundation in 2016. And Hyperledger Iroha, I will discuss a bit more how it enables uh, central bank digital currencies and fintech use cases. Uh, we'll start with an introduction about Sora Mitsu, um, followed by an introduction to Hyperledger Iroha, uh, first version 1, which is out since 2017, and later we will also discuss uh, version 2, which is uh, being worked on since 2020. And um, I will go a bit deeper in into three of the use cases, there's multiple, but um, three main ones for me are the digital identity use case, uh, Biaco, um, a digital currency, and Bakong, um, which is uh, probably the most interesting one. Uh, this is not me, this is uh, Makoto Takemiya. Dr. Takemiya is the CEO and the co-founder of the Soramitsu Group. He's a naturalized uh, Japanese and a former research engineer. Uh, he also achieved a PhD in interdisciplinary information studies from the University of Tokyo. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be here today uh, because of the uh, travel time and time differences and a lot of other obligations uh, in the Asian region. Um, a short introduction to Soramitsu. So Soramitsu is a global technology company delivering blockchain-based solutions for mainly enterprises, universities and governments from the creation of domestic and cross-border payment systems to the development of our own decentralized autonomous economy called Sora. Our projects and use cases represent the next generation of fintech. Uh, we are the initiators and one of the main contributors of Hyperledger Iroha and um, Sora Mitsu was founded in 2016. In the meanwhile it exists seven years and uh, there's around 150 people in um, seven countries officially, but uh, in reality it's a lot more, uh, mainly centered around uh, Europe and Asia. Maybe let's start with why Soramitsu is contributing to the Hyperledger Foundation. So uh, Soramitsu's mission is really to design a better world through decentralized technology and to push forward this process of designing a better world. Building open source products is part of our core values and drivers. And this way others can easily benefit from and also contribute to our work, bringing us closer to our goals faster. Of course, the Linux Foundation is the gold standard for open source project management, so it made a lot of sense to contribute to Hyperledger. And by working uh, with the Hyperledger Foundation, we can create a blockchain platform that is a lot bigger than Soramitsu, and it can be sustained and developed by anyone, basically, even without us. Um, as mentioned, we were going over some projects and use cases today. Um, Hyperledger Iroa is uh, one of the first major projects that Sora Mitsu has been working on since its initiation in 2016. This has led to a collaboration with the National Bank of Cambodia where we implemented a payment system called Bakong that is based on Hyperledger Iroha for the central bank and a regulator of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, it is targeted at 80 million users and we currently are past 1 million users so uh, that is already an amazing achievement. And uh, as you will see later, it is still growing fast. We also work together with the Asian Development Bank. Um, as mentioned earlier, the new economic system called Sora um, has also been live. This is not built with Hyperledger Iroha for now. It is built with Substrate. Um, but uh, as we will see later, uh, we do not exclude that uh, the future of Sora lies with Hyperledger Iroha rather than Substrate or next to Substrate. And um, also together with VCA we worked on an implementation of, or we are currently still working on an implementation of digital self-sovereign self identity rather. Um, and something we are made uh, enormously proud of as well is that we've been chosen by the Web3 Foundation to create the C++ implementation of Polkadot hosts, opening a lot of opportunities for builders uh, on Polkadot besides uh, the standard Rust and Substrate uh, usage. 
What is Hyperledger Hero? Uh, it's a blockchain platform and it aims to have Byzantine fault tolerance, make common use cases very simple to implement with robust libraries for both mobile and web applications. I think the mobile applications uh, focus uh, from the start makes us stand out and has helped us a lot in the uh, adoption um, as mentioned with Bakong with more than a million users. So there's two versions of uh, Hyperledger Hero. The first one is written in C++. Uh, it has no Turing complete smart contracts. It only has a library of predefined functions that cover most common use cases for financial applications. The uh, version two that is currently already live um, and that is being still being worked on is written in Rust. And it continues the, uh, the version one concept of having a robust library of predefined functions called the Iroha Special Instructions. And also it has during complete smart contracts executable in WebAssembly or wasn't. And something that uh, makes me very excited personally is the event triggers uh, to enable event driven execution of smart contracts uh, on which we will elaborate a bit further later. So, uh, first case study are digital on-chain identity. Um, built on Hyperledger Iroha eases the onboarding process for both new and existing BCA customers. It allows to share the data between the multiple BCA companies, uh, customer documents, blacklisted, uh, blacklisted people, etc. So it provides the opportunity to audit any operation in the BCA companies or group using uh, our Ro Iroha or our blockchain. And it has mobile applications both on Android and iOS for the customers and a web application that facilitates the operators in the BCA companies. So, um, very very much simplified but it is also a uh, very simplified solution is once that the user has been verified uh, he's able to pass KYC automatically so once he is verified he is verified for all the companies in the BCA group and a digital stamp of the approval for the customer is shared with all the companies a second case study um, is uh, Biako, a local digital currency uh, for which Sora Mitsu is working with the University of Aizu to create a campus currency. Um, it's being used by students, they can use it on campus, in store, in the cafeteria and it's completely based on mobile applications. So uh, in March uh, a test of the digital currency was conducted and early next year the system will go live uh, all over campus. Then our, our main case study for today is uh, called Bakong. It's the, um, in collaboration with the National Bank of Cambodia a, and built with Iroha, it's the world's first retail payment system run by a central bank using blockchain technology. So um, we're all very excited that we were the first and that we see now globally uh, similar initiatives are launching and almost every central bank is looking into um, their digital or digitalizing their local currency and so the the idea is that we had to make it as simple as possible for the users uh, especially in a country where a lot of people are unbanked but more people have actually a mobile phone so the focus lights on a mobile solution for the user um, where anyone with a Cambodian phone number can download the application and has, has access to the mobile currency. Money can be sent to any other person that is recorded or that has the uh, application himself and the transaction is recorded on Iroha, on the central bank's ledger. So this is what um, the mobile app looks like. It's kept very simple. You can send money to any registered user, you can display a QR code to receive payments or to receive other transactions. You can scan a QR code to pay at any merchant that is participating and uh, any bank, which is more, almost all banks in Cambodia are participating and you can deposit money to an existing bank account. 
this is what the desktop application for the uh, commercial bank looks like. So, um, Bakong uses a two-tier architecture. The central bank provides on one side the interbank, in, interbank ledger of all transactions and each commercial bank on this side provides access to transact on the platform to their users. So the ground truth of the, about the balances of money in the economy is at the central bank's ledger. And this is uh, built with Hyperledger Irohome. This is what it looks like, um, the interconnectability between the banks, the central bank, the payment gateways, and the um, mobile applications for the users. So why did we chose to do uh, Project Bakong? As mentioned, uh, only 22% of Cambodians over 15 years old have bank accounts. And that is, of course, a huge gap and a large unbanked population. Uh, large remittance markets in Cambodia. So domestic money transfers are common, yet still very costly. And um, a lot of people and or uh, the whole economy is missing out on a lot of internet commerce because very few people have a bank account so very few people have actually a credit card um, which is the most common way to uh, pay for internet commerce so these gaps work uh, the aim is to work away these gaps and um, besides the numbers of course this is what you do with you uh, you bank a lot of unbanked people you have a huge impact on the individual and also on the national economy so why use blockchain um, you can simplify payments architecture by having both a core banking system and an RTGS on the same platform. So you increase basically the efficiency of payment systems by creating a protocol for digital money and you create a trust minimized system. Um, you give users also mathematically provable property ownership which is uh, crucial in countries with a lot of unbanked people where also not everyone has all the required documentation um, so you can really um, Bakong really helps a lot of people to bring them into the official economic system a little bit an overview of Bakong in the news uh, so in 2017 it was announced that the uh, National Bank of Cambodia signed the blockchain agreement with Soramitsu and um, by the end of 2019 it was promised to deliver this uh, payment system on Hyperledger Iroha which was done and um, yeah, so the, indeed the most surprising thing about uh, about it is that it's going to be immediate or it was immediately a large scale development with 10 banks participating all over the country and the central bank and not just a small proof of concepts, which was really incredible. Um, yeah, these are some pictures from what it looks like. So this is a, a shop in uh, Cambodia where it shows that you can pay here with your QR um, code or you can pay by scanning uh, the QR code of the merchant and um, more good news so on the left we see the official launch of the um, of Bakong with the National Bank of Cambodia and two months ago um, Sora Mitsu started a proof of concept to do the same in Laos a neighboring country um, and as we will see this this offers a lot of opportunities for the whole region uh, Bakong received uh, received many rewards, fintech rewards, uh, banking rewards in Asia, and these are the current numbers. So we started um, in uh, at the end of 2019, and um, we have achieved a, a uh, aggregate volume of more than 10 billion US dollar in the meanwhile. And as you can see, um, we have a semester on semester growth in adoption, in usage, and uh, in volume. Uh, which is great to see and as mentioned it's targeted at uh, 18 million retail users we have currently passed uh, the 1 million users so um, we still have a lot a lot to accomplish and to look forward to one of the aspects is the uh, KHQR it's a standardized QR code that is used throughout Cambodia 
and all the uh, disparate payment systems are connected by Bakong. So you, you simply scan the QR code, it sends money instantly no matter what payment provider is used by the merchant or no matter which bank uh, lies behind it. So um, very user friendly and simplified in the front end. So what are the effects on the monetary policy? Um, very, it's very positive for the monetary policy, so it offers a lot of new opportunities to do targeted monetary policy. It has no negative effects because retail users, uh, they can have a limit on how much they have in their wallet. So there's no real competition with bank deposits. And uh, our system is merely a replacement for carrying around small amounts of cash in your wallet. Potential for cross-border transfers, and especially now that uh, we started the proof of concept with uh, the Central Bank of Laos. So, Bakong system allows for retail users uh, to send and receive money using their mobile device. If two commercial banks or central banks, uh, in this case, as, as I just mentioned, link their settlement to the system, this can allow retail users across borders to send and receive money very fast and super cheap compared to the current situation. So Forex operations can be provided by a intermediary with large reserves or a two-tier currency could allow for conversion between currencies with little friction. And what is great is that the digital currency can be tracked from mintage to the current transaction, of course, um, typical for blockchain transactions, in order to reduce the risk of money laundering and illegal activity. And as mentioned, uh, a proof of concept with the uh, Central Bank of the Lao uh, Democratic Republic has started and we are currently leading feasibility on digital currencies in Oceania. So imagine that this passes as well. We can create a very strong cross-border payment system all over the Asian or Southeast Asian region. So those were the use cases that are currently live, um, or some of the use cases currently live on version one of Iroha. Uh, since 2020, uh, Soramitsu has embarked on Hyperledger Iroha versus version two development, which is a complete rewrite of version one uh, in the Rust programming language. So as you, you remember coming from C++. So the main features of Iroha V2 are the WASM-based Turing Complete Smart Contracts, a world-first event-driven smart contract execution engine, completely on-chain using event triggers. Uh, probably my favorite phrase in the whole presentation, so I'll say it again. A world-first event-driven smart contract execution engine, completely on-chain using event triggers. And a block explorer and wallet support will also be available from the first full release. Um, a little bit an overview of the architecture. So it has a simple object model. It contains primitives you can work with, like domains, accounts, and assets. Um, if anyone has more technical questions, I would be happy to refer you to someone a bit more technical than me. Um, so feel free to, uh, to reach out later. Um, so a wide variety of information can be stored directly on-chain in the data model. Uh, also new here and uh, a big upgrade I would say is that we can store metadata uh, on-chain. And uh, this is an example of the Genesis block. Um, yeah, one of the features of uh, Iroha is uh, its special instructions, which are a library of built-in instructions to execute common on-chain logic. Um, Wasm, of course, you can. Uh, the advantage for Iroha too is that you can write in any code or in any language rather uh, that compiles to Wasm and run it on-chain. And uh, as mentioned earlier, you can attach triggers that are executed on events uh, in Iroha 2. So um, another framework that uses Rust is uh, Substrate. So what are, um, and both are being worked on by Soramitsu. Um, 
one is uh, more on the Sora network, which is in the Polkadot ecosystem, and then the other one is for uh, Eroha, for the um, central banks for digital identity and other use cases that we just mentioned. So. What are some of the pros of Iroha uh, V2, not V1, but V2, is the built-in object model versus Substrate. Uh, it's event triggers, it's ability to add metadata and uh, higher TPS. On the other side, Substrate has uh, advantages as well. It's focused more on multi-chain and parachains. Uh, it has more than a thousand contributors in different ecosystems, mainly Polkadot, but also Cosmos and Near. Uh, so the development of it is growing fast. Um, so both have their advantages, and uh, that's why we both li we like to work with both of them. So something I'm personally very excited about is uh, the future, the near future of Iroha V2, and what we can do with some of our uh, also mainly built and contributed by Sora Mitsu uh, DeFi applications, like for example PokaSwap which is a DEX currently running on the Sora network substrate. And with the event trigger uh, feature of Iroha V2 uh, and the on-chain metadata, it makes it very interesting to uh, what we're currently doing, look into the options to have this uh, run on Iroha 2. You can find the documentation here. And if you have any further questions, you can talk to me directly now, or you can always send an email to uh, Group CEO Makoto Takamiya. Thank you very much.